Welcome to End Time Videos. Um, let's explore something about the carburetors. I had made this carburetor calculator that gave um, size recommended sizes for trail and street use and for racing. Like in this case, for a 200cc uh, engine, we're having to 9,000 RPM, the sizing would be 26 millimeters to 37, 37 being for racing. And that is based upon the air velocity, because it's the air velocity that acts on the gasoline droplets to atomize them. But I wanted to understand that more, so I've delved more into that topic recently and I want to share with you what I'm discovering. So as the air goes through the carburetor, it shears off atomized particles of that fuel from each fuel droplet. That's how it works. And you wind up having a mixture of very fine droplets and, and different size droplets. So, but the idea here being that the, the higher the velocity, the more shearing happens. And the more atomized the fuel, and of course, the more atomized the fuel, the faster the flame speed in the combustion chamber. And that's important to know because uh, the higher the RPM, the less time there is for that burn to happen, so you want a faster speed. So the fuel comes up past the, through the needle jet. Down here is going to be the main jet. And so you get the needle jet, and the, the, the clearance between the needle and the needle jet is where the, the fuel comes up through. Even the very uh, close throttle position, you have some space there, and some gasoline comes up. So I'm not even considering the idle mixture right now. I'm just considering what's coming up through the needle jet. So at first I thought probably the most important thing is what happens here under the slide. So um, using my, um, my jetting calculator, I was able to calculate or to figure out the air velocity at different RPM, and that's what this red graph is right here. Uh, air velocity at the needle, and the needle clearance would be this black graph right here. And so my idea of how to get a rough estimation of the fuel atomization is divide the air velocity by the needle clearance. And that gave me these two graphs right here, which just struck me as, as not being right. Okay, there's, there's too much variation between high atomization at low RPM and low atomization at high RPM, which is the opposite of what you want. Okay, so I had the thought, well, you've just got, you know, if this is a 38 millimeter carburetor, you've got, what is that? Uh, You've got like nine millimeters here from the needle to the, the front edge of the, of the slide. And except for a wide open throttle, then this area, this cross sectional area here, is more than what's under the slide. And you've got all this space right here before the reed valve for that shearing to happen. So I decided to just consider the the airspeed in this uh, intake track. And so um, this is the air velocity in the, the track, which is going up in a linear response to the RPM, quite different than uh, what you have here. And the resultant atomization I got by dividing the air velocity by the uh, needle clearance, this, the same in this case, 
gives me these two graphs right here, which makes a whole lot more sense. So now, what do I do with these two graphs? How do I how do I understand this? Okay, so for racing, you're using the mostly the top 2,500 RPM, more more like this, the last 2,000 RPM. So you get for 200 uh, 250 cc bike, you've got this last section right here from 7,000 to 9,000. Okay, so it wouldn't make sense that they would they would have the fuel atomization just be optimal at the very top RPM. I mean, you could with a really big size carburetor, but most probably you've got um, a medium amount. So we can say we're racing carb. In this case, it would be this line right here would be ideal for atomization, which is a, an average of what's going on there. And for trail riding and street riding, you're more like emphasis is between five and seven thousand RPM. So the 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 average for that would be about right. Okay, so yeah, in this case, uh, a, a trail or street bike with a 26 millimeter carb has higher uh, velocity because the uh, the area is smaller. With that higher velocity, you get more atomization. Um, You may be wondering why is it that atomization is is less for a a racing bike? That's a very good question, and one I don't really have the answer to right now. Uh, I know that that the bigger the droplets, the more uh, more cooling goes on. So maybe it's a, a compromise. I don't know. It's, it's it's a subject I need to delve into further, but for right now, let's just take it at face value. And then the thought occurred to me, well, couldn't you um, have a variable area? between the carburetor and the rebound. So that um, as you open the throttle and get into the higher RPM, the, uh, the, the atomization will go down as a result of uh, lower air velocity. Yes, I think there's a way to do it. So, if with your uh, with your throttle cable, let's say this section right here was converted to a rectangular form and there was a movable upper and lower part so that the main part of the uh, the air velocity is going to be increased right here Actually, um, I don't know if I, I think I said that wrong. Let's say this is your, your cable. Let's say if it was a dual cable and somehow it controlled 
the movement there. But I think it had to be in the opposite way because you, as you open that up for the higher RPM, you also want this to open up. Oh, that worked. And yeah, it would, it would pull that somehow connected down here also. It's just an idea. It's, it's nice to uh, come up with new ideas. But the basis of everything is understanding what's happening in the engine, in the carburetor, in the pipe, etc. So, I, I just wanted to end up showing you my jet and calculator, from which I also got data to do the analysis. And the great thing about having such calculators is they're not just utilities to help you get select the right variables like you know a different needle different main jet whatever they're really really great as teaching tools I've learned so much about carburetors from making this calculator and using it playing around with it customers giving me different uh, situations trying to help them figure it out it's been a fantastic teaching tool same thing goes with the, uh, the pot calculator. So much so that I've totally abandoned all the previous ideology as far as just real basic rules for pipes. You have to analyze the whole thing together and use uh, return wave uh, calculations in that also. So, I guess that's all for now. Thanks for watching. I hope it has stimulated a little brain activity for you and made your evening a little bit less boring. Take care.